Hello students, today I'm going to take you through the steps required to produce an AutoCAD electrical drawing. These types of schematics are used exclusively in industry to help wire machines and then program them later if necessary. So hopefully you have the schematic opened up. It should look like what you see here on my screen here. I'm going to notice some important text that's written right here. We're going to get to these later. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to insert a ladder rung. Okay, click on that and here's where you're going to find those numbers come in handy. The width of our ladder rungs we want to be 20.0. The spacing of our rungs we want to be 3.00. We want a total of five rungs. And we want the first reference for our rung wire numbers to be 100. And then we're going to go ahead and hit OK on that. And when you do that, then your cursor is going to want you to draw that. So you're going to click and hold somewhere, and then that will automatically insert your rungs. Okay, now that we have our rungs inserted, we're ready to start putting in our graphical symbols for our electrical controls. So we're going to click on the icon menu here. And the first thing that we see is our stop button. So we're going to click on buttons. And we're going to get the normally open, I'm sorry, the normally closed mushroom head. We're going to click on that. But before we do that, we're going to change the scale of all of our symbols to 3.5. That way our symbols will appear a little bit larger. So we'll click on that and we're going to bring it over here. We're going to line it up somewhere. All we have to do is get it close. What I recommend is to line it up on a vertical grid mark. That way we can keep all of the symbols lined up nice and neat. So we're just going to click right there and as you can see that symbol went ahead and placed itself right where it needed to go. Now we're going to change the component tag. We're just going to call this a stop PB and hit OK. And there is our stop PB. Now we're going to grab another button. This one's going to be a start PB. So we're going to get a normally open push button. And again, just try to line that up on the vertical grid mark. Once you're there, go ahead and click. And we'll give this a component tag of the stop PB. And hit OK. And now we're going to get a control relay. So we'll click the icon menu again. And we're going to click on the relays feature over here. And we're going to grab the standard control relay. So we're going to grab that. We're going to bring it over here. We're going to line it up on the vertical mark here. And we're going to call this CR1. And we'll just leave that and hit OK. All right, now we're going to grab some associated contacts with that CR1. So we're going to click our icon menu back here to relays and contacts and we're going to grab a normally closed relay contact and we'll bring that down and we'll line it up on our vertical grid and now we're going to match that to its parent so we're going to call this click on the parent and sibling and then all we're going to do is come over here and click on the CR1 and then hit OK and when that happens, you can see that it's gone ahead and matched up the cross references for where that relay is used. And it also put a number over here telling us it's used in line 101. So now we'll grab another icon here. We're going to come down here and find instrumentation. No, nope, I'm sorry. We're going to grab pilot lights. And we're going to grab a red light. 
So we'll bring that over. We're going to line that up on our vertical axis. And click right there and notice it went ahead and put it right in for us. We're going to call this the manual light. And hit OK. Okay, and now before we get too far, we're going to go ahead and put in our CLN circuit up here above our stop PB. So we're going to come and grab a set of contacts off of our control relay. And we're going to bring those down. We're going to line them up right underneath of the stop PB. And we're going to click right there. And we're going to call this CR1, but we're going to match it to the actual parent. So we're going to click that, and then we're going to bring it over here, and we're going to click on CR1. And then all we need to do is hit OK. And it went ahead and put in our cross-references for us as well. Now let's go ahead and add the wires to that. So click on the wire icon above. And then we're going to click here come out and try to keep it lined up and click there. We'll now do the other side. We're going to click, come over and then try to keep them somewhat even and click. And there you can see now we have our seal in created around the stop PB. So now we're going to go ahead and finish our auto light. So we're going to grab an icon here and we need a CR1 normally open. So we're going to find our relays here. Normally open relay contact. We're going to bring that down and line it up. Click. And now we're going to match it to its parent. So we're going to go back up to CR1. And hit OK. Now we need to put the icon in for the light or we'll click on the icon menu. And we're going to come over and find our lights. And this one's going to be a green light. So we'll choose the green standard. Bring it over and just try to line it up with the ones up above. And hit click. And then we'll call this the auto light. and hit OK. And notice it went ahead and placed that icon in there for us. Okay, now we need to move our drawing up. So we're going to just click our middle, middle mouse wheel here. We're going to click and hold. And we're going to move our drawing up a little bit so we can continue putting the rest of our components in. Now we're going to come over here and click our icon menu. And we're going to grab what's called a float switch. And we want the normally closed float switch. So we're going to grab this level switch right here, which is the same as a float switch. We're going to bring it down, and then we're going to line it up with our top ones. And click. And we'll call this the tank full. We'll hit OK on that. And now we're going to put in another set of contacts from our CR1 relay. We're going to grab a set of relay contacts. We want the normally open ones. And we're going to bring this down and kind of line it up with our top one that we've already put in. And we're going to match this, the parent sibling, to CR1 as well. So click there. And then you may need to zoom out so that you can touch on the CR1 right here. And as long as it says CR1, hit OK. And then you may want to zoom back in and then reposition your drawing. OK, so now we need to put in our pump motor contacts. So we're going to click on the icon here again. This time we're going to use a motor. So 
We're going to click on motor control. And we're just going to grab a single phase motor right here. And we're going to bring that over and we're going to line it up with our other features above. We'll click there and we'll call this pump motor. And under the ratings, we're going to call this one horsepower and hit OK. And then you can see that it automatically put that in there for us, except for we got too much information in there. So we're going to right click on that after it's selected. We're going to hit edit the component and we're going to take the horsepower portion out of it and just hit OK. So now we know that is a one horsepower motor. Okay, reposition your drawing if necessary. And then we're going to finish the last rung of our ladder by putting in a temperature sensor. Click on the icon menu. And we're going to get the pressure and temperature switches. And we're going to grab a normally closed temperature sensor. We'll bring that down and we're going to line that up above our tank full on the vertical grid mark. And we're going to call this the tank temperature. And hit OK. All right, if it spills over a little bit, we're just going to click on it. Then we're going to click on its move handle, so we'll just reposition that a little bit. And then hit the escape key. And now we need to put one last input device in, and that's going to be our tank full. We're going to come down and find our flow and level switches again. And we want a normally open level switch this time, so we're going to click on that. We'll bring that down and we're going to line it up with our horizontal ladder rungs and click. And we're going to call this the tank full and hit OK. And the last thing we need to put in is a heater to show that we're going to heat the tank up. We're going to hit the icon menu, and I believe we'll find that under the miscellaneous. We'll hit the plus button here for miscellaneous. And under the electronics tab, you'll find the fixed resistor. And a resistor is just another symbol for a heater. So we'll click that and then bring it down and line it up with our above features. And then click. All right, and in the ohms rating here, we're going to type 20 and space. And for the component tag, we'll call that the tank heater. And then hit OK. OK, so now we should have all of the features that we need in our start-stop circuit. And the last thing that we need to do is add the wire numbers that would be associated with this drawing. So we're going to come to the top and we're going to click on wire numbers. And we're going to tag slash the new and unnumbered only. And we're going to start with number one. And we're going to do project wide or drawing wide. And we should be OK there. So hit drawing wide. And there you can see it put all of our numbers in there, except for our numbers are not what I wanted them to be. So I'm going to type in the command line. And then I'm going to press Control and Z at the same time to undo that. 
So I'm going to hit wire numbers again. I'm going to click. And then I want them to be sequential. So starting with one. So we're going to do tag new unnumbered only. We're going to start with number one. And we're going to do drawing wide. And now we have all of our numbers where we need them to be. With this being wire number one over here. This being wire two, which is our neutral. Wire three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So here we can see how easy AutoCAD electrical can be used to create an electrical drawing. So now let's see if we can figure out how this drawing works. If we press the stop PB button here, it energizes our control relay up here. When that energizes, it creates a CLN circuit around CR1, which then allows us to remove the stop button or no longer hold it down and it will stay energized. At the same time, CR1 is going to change state making the red light go off and this CR1 is going to change state by closing making the auto light come on and then as long as CR1 is energized and the tank is full we're going to start the pump motor and then as long as the tank is calling to heat the temperature of the fluid and the tank is full then the heater will be energized to go ahead and start heating that tank. As soon as the tank is no longer calling for temperature, then the heater would then shut off. So this is just a simple electrical schematic to control a typical hydraulic system using a start and stop button, which is then going to control a relay, which will then control the pump motor and allow the tank to heat up and then cool down as necessary. So now that we've created our drawing, we want to save our drawing by hitting File, Save As, and then save this in a drawing location that you can remember. I'm just going to call mine R2. And hit save. And then the last thing that we want to do is we want to plot this or print it. <coughs> so I'm going to right click on model. I'm going to hit plot. And if you get a warning here, just hit OK. It means it doesn't know what printer to use. Here I'm going to select the printer. OK, to select the printer, I would hit the down arrow here and select the printer that I wanted it to go to. But I just realized that we didn't update the title block, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that by clicking the X in the corner. And then we need to make some changes to our title block to reflect this drawing as yours. So if we type in the title block ATT edit which is attribute edit and hit enter we get a command down here to select the block reference. So whichever one we want to edit we just click on. So I'm going to click on R Parker And obviously we didn't have a title block here, so the easiest way to fix these is going to be to hit the escape key and then go to the area you want to correct and then double click on it. And then you can see the blue comes up, which means it's going to allow you to edit this command. So if I just come down to the end and put A student in here now that attribute would be changed and of course you're going to want to also change the date 
So we would just click on the block there and then put our cursor where we wanted it to go. So we'll make this today's date 10-30. Okay, now that we've modified our title block, we can go ahead and zoom back out. And then we'll go back to the model tab and we'll plot it. Again, just acknowledge that and then choose the plotter that you want to do. And for this exercise, I'm going to plot it twice. I'm going to plot it to my printer. I'm going to make sure that it has fit to the paper. The extents are selected. I'm going to center the plot and then I'm going to preview it to make sure that it looks appropriate. And there is my completed drawing. So if I like how it appears, I'm going to click on the plot button up in the corner. And that will send it to the actual printer. And now that we've printed it for our binders, we're going to right click on model one more time and we're going to hit plot. And just acknowledge that if you get that error. And this time we're going to choose the cute PDF writer. So we're going to make sure that it says fit to paper, center the plot, the extents are selected, and then preview again. And as long as our drawing appears okay, we're going to go ahead and hit the plot icon in the top left. Now this time we're plotting it to a PDF, so that's going to create a file for us. And as soon as that file box comes up, you can go ahead and give it a name and then save it in a location that you can access later. So I'm just going to put mine here and put it in the courses section and hit save. Okay, so for review, this is actually just an electrical schematic drawing that tells us how this particular piece of equipment would be wired. It assigns all the graphical images which tell us what they mean, as well as the correct wire numbers that would be used to wire this station up. And the icons that we used, of course, would be the icon menu here, which has all of our schematic symbols that we were using. We also grabbed the ladder to insert a certain amount of rungs to work with. And the wires, if necessary, to create our seal ends. And then last, we added the wire numbers to the drawing. Okay, so I hope this helps you in creation of your AutoCAD electrical drawings.